Welcome to the Deadly Addictions channel. Hello everybody. I'm going to be talking about Star Trek, the original series. So I'm talking about Star Trek that was, I believe, aired on 1966, created by Gene Roddenberry, starring William Shatner, Leonard Nimoy, DeForest Kelly, so on and so forth. As a child growing up, there were some things that captured me at certain ages. This is one of the first things I remember on TV that really captivated me. The concept of it, the colors, the way it was filmed. Now, looking into it, Gene Roddenberry, who I believe should have had every award, peace prizes, and everything, a wonderful person, human being, as far as I know, he created a long lasting legacy. So, even the original series, which is only three seasons, and there's this whole story about it was canceled and brought back. And for me, let's say I have a criteria of you need four seasons to be up there in the top of the top TV shows. I would say Star Trek, it all gets a pass. This genius, this incredible story is lived on through multiple TV iterations, which I'll probably do my surface thoughts type thing on each one in time. But talking about the original series is when I first was aware of TV, when I started daydreaming and using my imagination, whether it was Starsky and Hutch and the Bionic Man, it's Star Trek, the original series also. There are times when things started getting a little weird, and I'm talking before sixth grade. And I always had a problem sleeping. I think I've talked about this on other podcasts, but these are these mirrors that were on these little metal frames that would spin. One end was big and warped everything so you can get close, and the other end was like a normal mirror. So when my aunt would go to sleep, I would position the mirror so I could watch it from my bed. And sometimes I went right to school. I stayed up all night. So I've always been that type of person. And this was a show that got me through. This is a show that I wanted to envision would happen when we would uh, do the space shuttles in time and over developing my, you know, my brain and getting older, the wishes and thoughts of what I would see us being a space civilization by the time I was a certain age. All those hopes and dreams and that sci-fi great feeling I started it with Star Trek I think uh, even before Star Wars for me although being that I'm born in 71 there is that blend of memory where you know Star Wars as a movie just was a huge impact and affects me in a different way uh, but Star Trek because it's on reruns of syndication was there every night, sometimes multiple times a night. Into the hours, you'd watch the honeymooners and the odd couple. Star Trek was there somewhere. The Twilight Zone, another podcast I'll do. Looking into the story as I got older, it's just a phenomenal idea. And maybe, and even honestly, he talks about where he gets his inf- inspirations from. We all do. But for him to put it together the way he did the the groundbreaking TV he created, in my opinion, is always going to last uh, the test of time, especially with the legacies being so so phenomenal. Deep Space Nine, the Next Generation, which actually took the torch from the original series, and I think Bones, the Forrest Kelly, was the one who did it. And then later on, Lenny Nimoy would do. Uh, cameos and some other people from the original series. But I think DeForest Kelly is the one who came on to the Galaxy Class ship who's all old and shriveled, I guess in real life, and makeup. 
But the original is where that crew came from that. And it was, I guess now it's more Kirk, Spock, and Bones. Back then it was a little more, it was still them three, but it was a little more dispersed rather than the movies. So I guess the movies are making Scotty a little bit more prominent. But that camaraderie, that difference in motives and emotional value, and I'm talking mostly about Spock and Kirk and Lenny Nemo, that interaction. And if you ask me, DeForest Kelly, who played Bones, was clearly the best actor on that show. Maybe not the best actor who came on and guest starred on the show. There were so many. This show is had so many great stars on it. It's hard to even mention any of them without just getting bogged down. But groundbreaking premises, TV, breaking genres, giving uh, the hope of a future, no money, and some of the fucking episodes of the original series are mind-numbingly dumb. They're just... How do you control Spock's brain? Some of the concepts are so out there, it's just ridiculous. Looking back, they look horrible. But the charm was there. The heart was always there. Still watching it again and over and over. Although I have a little bit of problem with they re-upped everything and they kind of gave it an... Uh, I don't know, they redressed it a little bit. There's a new releases of the original series where the insides of the ships are done more differently and catching up to the bridge the gap between the next generation, I guess. Not keeping it in line with the newer movies, although that would be the newer TV series, which I did a podcast on, which would be Star Trek Discovery and Picard, which seemed to be more in line visually with J.J. Abrams' Star Trek. But there are blends. There are always blends. They do it pretty good. I love seeing the Enterprise on Discovery. So you've got this genius. The actors come together, casting, give everybody awards, whatever you want. It shows uh, just a, a hit, in my opinion. Fans bringing it back. And you got the people who sculpt these ships, all the work on behind it, filming it. I don't care how outdated it looks. It still captures my imagination. The original series for Star Trek just is that magic for me. I know people could look back at it. You got so much superior stuff nowadays. But even when you try to get things like Farscape and you want to get the crews together and a lot of shows are doing it, the awful things uh, that are com comparable, there's just something about that original series. The... And looking at the behind-the-scenes stuff now, it's like, how did it ever get off the ground? How did he ever get along? You know, George Takei, um, Croning. I mean, there's just so much shit you find out that was going on. And then the movies, which I'll get to eventually, probably. But this original series cast went on to do, like, seven movies. Or something like that. Yeah, seven. And they bridged the gap with other movies, like Generations. They've done time spanning things and guest stars on TV shows. So although Kirk, Spock, and Bones, well, Bones was, a, I think, a legitimate actor with a lot of good stuff under his belt, um, uh, famous from the original series, the movies made everybody world famous. Everybody. You know, the main cast, uh, Nichols, the uh, Ohura. Everybody became popular. There's so much cult um stuff uh there's things in the um lexicon of uh, the way we speak that comes from star trek memes red shirts there's just so much there i'm a big fan of the old phasers and although they've updated it to shoot i guess more realistically i'm still a big fan of the phasers and the way they operate even the handheld ones the original series had a wig get up and my uncle he made like his own prop one. It was pretty, it was incredible. But it had a, it was the phase of the old classic style, bulky black type looking thing. And then it had a little attachment on top that was like a type two phase that they would carry in a belt, which was like a little, little box. <laughs> and it didn't hold the charge as well. And you couldn't, I think, drain it. Because I think some episodes they used the batteries from the, the hand phases 
to power the shuttles or something like that to repower the engines or something to that effect. But these little ones were just like little button boxes that they would keep on, and it fit on the top of the face. It was just mind-boggling to me. I would play with it. My uncle didn't do nothing. He put in like a CO2 cartridge and actually designed it himself, but I would just play with this replica thing he had over and over. I even got the toys. Everything I can get my hands on was in that phase where I was getting birthday money. It was mostly focused on Star Wars, Battlestar Galactica, Transformers, and Star Trek wasn't like to go out, go out there type thing where you got their toys and stuff. But there was a line in City of Bargains, or aisle, I should say, that had every time a gun. So even if it was a Batman gun, it would have a light flashlight would shine the bat signal, but it was like a gun or a grappling hook type thing. Battlestar Galactica, you had their type of guns, which were fucking awesome, by the way. And Star Trek, they had phasers, and they came out with different cars, and even when the movies progressed, it wasn't until the next generation, and when the movies were ending for the original series, but really sick stuff was out there on the market. I was probably a little late, but there are collectors organizations that have really amazing props, tricorders, everything, even br- uh, bridging the series. So the updated next generation look, which, which was carried all the way to Voyager, all those type of devices, their scanners and all their type of things. You got um, such a difference in them. And yet the market was out there. And I always appreciate that. I have some lightsabers and stuff from Master Republic for Star Wars. But I never got into that. But going for the toys, having the phases and the, the belt, it was just something I did or I looked for on Christmases and birthdays. Getting into the older years, you know, becoming a teenager, I would just, I would actually go look and try to read the novels. I don't care who wrote it, William Shatner, whoever. And I would just, I would read the books. I was a big book nerd. I had, I still have a big bookcase with lots of books, mostly fantasy and science fiction, medieval type stuff, The Lord of the Rings. But Star Trek has always been on the shelf. It was not the comic books or the original series. It's just something that's captivating from them. Even the shitty acting and the bad fucking setups. It's just, it works for me. The charm works. Uh... And they did an incredible thing. Star Trek is famous for the Tribbles episode. A little furry fucking ball thing. So just stupid. And Deep Space Nine intercut them going back in time and being part of the episode. And it is amazing. It's one of the most fun things I've ever watched to watch this crew of Deep Space Nine, Captain Sisko, whatever. Chief O'Brien interacting and being involved in the original series episode. Groundbreaking, fucking amazing. So it gets mentioned here in the original series and probably when I talk about Deep Space Nine. But capturing my childhood, uh, giving me something to think about, making the long nights and my active brain, keeping it occupied, give me a sense of the future. Uh, growing up with these concepts of... Uh, uh, like, what was it meant to be groundbreaking when a white and black person kissed? And I can remember at, at this time, it was also at the same time where I remember the first time I was in a pizzeria with uh, a friend from school, really good friend, and, and I felt there was something different. I could tell there was, I didn't know what it was. And my friend wouldn't didn't want to come eat pizza there. And I mentioned it to my mom, and she said, why don't you buy the pizza and bring it here? Because I lived, well, I went to PS 153, which is like on East uh, Homecrest and 12th, on T. I lived on 12th, right off the corner on U, and on Homecrest. I think this time was Homecrest and uh, even U, between Homecrest and like 13th Street. So I was a block away from the school at any point. And he would get bussed in. So when you go out for lunch, when you got lunch, I would invite him to my house. Who's you know, he was a good friend. I had no concept of color or anything. And I think Star Trek is a great way of experiencing this future where there's no money, there's 
the power of words mean nothing. Uh, you know, you get some really good concepts blended in that can give you, you know, hope that there could be a future. It doesn't have to be as mind-numbingly set up. It could have a blending of the new Battlestar Galactica to agree realism. But with the promise of we can get over our stuff. We can get together with the differences in our people. We're all fucking humans with different melatonin and geographical things because of how we evolved it. It's so stupid. But yet, it is what it is. And the show tried to, you know, push that aside and say, no, this is uh, what could be. This is a... Uh, humanity has evolved and has moved past these things. And it's further exemplified in the legacy the original series carried on, which is really Gene Roddenberry. So he gets so much praise. My appreciation it was something that really was a big part of my childhood. It just gave me a lot to think about, especially growing up and you know getting into those years. You're going from public school to junior high, and even throughout my teenage years and getting into psychology and all that stuff. Uh, it was further reason to go back to the original, as campy as it was, as corny as it was, and to see the genesis of his ideas and his thoughts. As much as he borrowed from other things and other people did it and maybe have done it better in certain circumstances, this will always find a special place in my heart. I would recommend people watch the original series, and maybe the updated one, because it might bridge that gap between what you're used to. But I can see a group of just people just saying, that's fucking ridiculous, stupid, I'm, I'm just done. I get it. You know, you want to watch The Expanse or, you know, something a little more like Battlestar Galactica, I get it. But I'll never um, pass by watching the original series. If it's on, it just glues my attention. Everything... Pops for me, the colors, the interactions, the good and the bad stuff. And I would recommend it for people to watch. Star Trek, the original series. Boldly go where no one has gone before. Take care.